Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Cecilia Rosales and I am a branch manager for Self Help Federal Credit Union. Uh, I also serve as a board member slash treasurer for She Became. Uh, and today's video is titled uh, Your Money Matters. So yep, you guessed it. I'm going to be talking to you today a little bit about money. Um, the three topics that I'm going to cover in this short video, uh, how to create a basic household budget. I'm going to talk about the CARES Act and the impact that it has on your student loans. Uh, and then last but not least, I'm going to talk to you about how to manage your debt during this time, uh, specifically how to contact your lenders uh, and ask for payment assistance if you need it. Um, before we get started, though, I do want to send a huge thank you and a huge shout out to our healthcare workers, our essential workers and volunteers that every day are leaving the comfort and the safety of their homes uh, to provide a needed service to our community. So thank you all for everything you do. Um, so let's get started. Okay. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is a budget. Um, I'm going to ask you guys, have you guys ever made one before? Do you have one now? If you do, do you stick to your budget? Um, but for those of you that don't have one or have never created one before, it can sometimes be a little bit daunting or intimidating. Um, but basically what a budget is, is a spending plan. Um, a budget allows you to make sure that you're going to have enough money for the things that you need, uh, like shelter, um, food, things like that. Uh, and it also helps you um, track and, and ensure that you have money for the things that are important to you. Um, brunch for me. Uh, maybe you like to go out to the movies every once in a while. You need to make sure that you have enough money for all of that to avoid getting into debt or just um, just to be financially savvy. Um, following a budget is also going to help you stay out of debt. Uh, and if you're in debt, following a budget can help you get out of debt faster. Um, not just during you know this COVID-19 pandemic, but just year round. It's a good habit to have. Uh, and it's going to ensure, too, that you're able to save some money and put some money away in case of an emergency. Um, so how do you create a budget, right? Um, I mentioned sometimes it's a little bit scary if you don't know where to start, but um, I do want to let you know that there's a lot of free apps out there now that uh, you can download right on your phone and start that way. Um, but if you're like me, I still like to kind of write things down on, on pen and paper um, and do the math myself because then it kind of just really hits home on, on what my spending habits are. But um, without further ado, let's get going. So where do you start, right? So first, when you're creating a budget, you need to start off with um, income, right? How much money do you have to spend? Um, you need to know how much money is coming in before you can start to plan on where that money is going to go out and how it's going to go out. Um, so first, uh, you're going to write down what your sources of income are. Okay, What's income? Mon income is any money that you receive from wherever. Okay, So let's say um, income could be money coming in from a job that you have. Um, if you receive Social Security, SSI benefits, um, or if you have two jobs, that's another source of income. Um, if you have a little hustle on the side where uh, maybe you make some goods and you make some money off of that, you want to calculate and see how much money you make every month or every week and start there. Um, for the purposes of this exercise, I'm going to keep it very simple just so that it's easy to follow. Um, I do want to mention also that we do have some uh, attachments and some worksheets that we're able to send you so you can download and print from home it, for your own use too. Okay. Uh, so for income, let's say for this example, I have uh, a job and I get paid twice a month, okay? And let's say I make $500 every paycheck and that's after taxes, okay? So what I see deposited into my bank account or what I get in my check for me is actually $500. So if I get paid twice a month, that's $1,000 in income, okay? So that's my income tab. That's how much money I have to play with or to just pay my bills with. So we're going to start there, okay? Next... I'm going to take a look at what bills I have to pay. So bills are the ones that are not going to wait for you. So bills are your rent. You want to make a category for that. So calculate how much your rent is if you pay rent. For this example, I'm going to use $300. Um, I have a car payment in this example. So I have to pay my car every month. I can't get to work without my car. So let's say my car payment's another $300. Okay. Then I have my cell phone, which is what I'm recording this video on. I need to have my cell phone, and my cell phone bill is $100 a month. Okay. Let's say um, I'm looking at my expenses and what I'm spending my money, and I signed up for the gym last year, and I'm paying $19.99 a month to go to the gym. I don't really go. 
Uh, and then um, also I spend $5 on lunch every day, Monday through Friday, five days a week. So when you do the math on that, five times five, 25 times four is 100. So I spend $100 on lunch every week. And then I like to go out to brunch with my friends uh, once a month. So that's about $35 a month that I'm spending there. So once you add up all of those expenses, oh my gosh, I forgot. Utilities, okay? My water, my gas, electric. Um, let's say in this example, I live in an apartment. So my utilities are $50. Okay, so after I add up all of my expenses, and the ones that I just mentioned, my total expenses come out to $904.99. Okay, so now uh, we're gonna do a little bit of math. So we're gonna take how much money I make, my income, which is $1,000, and from there, I'm gonna subtract all of my expenses, which was everything that I mentioned before. My cell phone bill, my brunch date with my friends, uh, my gym membership, car payment, food, rent, and utilities. So $1,000 minus all of my expenses, which totaled $904.99. That means I have $95 and one penny. So after reviewing my income and my expenses, I can see that I'm gonna have very money, very little money left over for gas or for any other unexpected emergencies that might come up. Um, I'm probably not going to have enough money if I or if my friends invite me out to dinner one night um, because I've already pretty much exhausted all of my income on my bills and my monthly brunch date and my gym membership. So if you're in a situation where after you look at your income and your expenses and there's very little money left over or you're not comfortable with how much is left over and you'd like to see more, um, then there's things that you can do to see what expenses can you cut or what expenses can you lower so that at the end of every month you have more money left over um, you want to try to put some money away in a savings account also um, I know for a lot of people it's it's just sometimes that you just can't do it um, but it's something that you should strive for or a goal that should definitely be in your financial plan because um, if something were to break down with your car you don't want to get into debt in order to have to fix it you want to be able to try to at least have some money in your savings account so that you don't put yourself in a hole um, so in this exercise I don't feel comfortable with having just $95 left over. Uh, like I mentioned, I didn't, I didn't calculate that I need to put gas in my car. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a look at the things that I'm spending my money on or my monthly bills and see what I can cut. Um, the first thing that I'm gonna cut is that gym membership that's $19.99. Uh, I mentioned earlier, some of you might have heard me say, I don't go to the gym. I don't know why I signed up, I never go. Um, there's a park near my house, I can run there, maybe I can just uh, do some cardio instead of having to, to go to the gym to lift weights. So I'm gonna cut that gym membership out. I'm gonna call um, in shape and say no more. So because you cut that uh, $19.99 monthly gym membership, now that's gonna save you close to $240 a, a year extra on that for having just cut that off. And then also too, I'm gonna um, cut down on my brunching. Uh, so that brunch, instead of going every month, maybe I'll go every two months instead. Um, and when you do the math on that, that's going to save me about $210 a year extra on that. So by cutting unexpected, or I'm sorry, not unexpected, but unnecessary items from your spending, it can really make a big impact on how much money you save in the long run. Um, how much money you have left over, you know, it's just a smart thing to do. Um, by you making a budget, it also really kind of lets you see where, where you're spending your money. Uh, maybe you're going to Target too much. You know, maybe you got to put put a cap on that. Um, so that that's what the budget is going to do. Um, some some good free budgeting apps for you to use if you don't like the pen and paper kind of style. Um, I looked some up and there's one called Good Budget. Uh, that one's free uh, and it's good, and very easy to use. Um, Mint, that's Mint Budget Tracker specifically, and that one's free as well. And then there's one called Toshel. Um, that one's really good too. And Toshel is spelled T O S. Uh, HL Toshel. Um, the only thing you're going to need for that is you're going to need to again know how much money you make so that you can put those figures in and then you're going to need to gather a list of all of your bills so that you know what to what numbers to plug in when it says you know how much is your car payment how much is your rent um, how much money do you spend on entertainment entertainment is obviously going out to eat going out for drinks with your friends um, going out you know and buying random things here and there 
um, make sure you kind of have those numbers for those uh, categories so that you're able to put them into the apps. And then those apps will actually do the math for you and let you know how much money you should have over at the end of every month. Um, and then also if there's items you want to cut, it'll show you kind of what your savings can be uh, monthly and yearly for those two. Um, one more time, uh, we do have some PDF worksheets that we can send to you so that you can, with all of these categories um, already on there, so that all you have to do is just plug in the numbers um, and then grab a calculator, do the math, and start with your budget that way. Okay? So next topic, guys. Um, CARES Act. You guys might have heard of it. The CARES Act uh, is was passed by Congress a couple weeks ago. Um, and the CARES Act stands for Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security. Uh, so the CARES Act provided us, a lot of us, with our stimulus checks. Um, it provided a lot of business with some grants so that they were able to continue to pay their employees and not having to lay them off. Uh, so there's a lot of provisions and things that were included in there to help us kind of get through, through um, the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, particularly uh, for student loans. Uh, the one thing I kind of wanted to touch on that, um, for student loans, for those of you that have federal student loans, the CARES Act uh, provided an automatic suspension of principal and interest payments through September 30th, uh, 2020. So through September 20, um, so uh, principal and interest payments on federally held student loans are suspended through September 30th, 2020. Um, the CARES Act says that there's nothing that you need to do on your end, that this is something that's automatically going to happen. However, for private, non-federal student loans, and these are the ones that are a service, or I'm sorry, owned by banks, credit union, um, the schools themselves, or other private entities, um, they unfortunately, uh, that provision was not covered for them. Uh, however, it does not mean that they are not offering any financial or payment assistance. So for those of you that um, have private student loans, I highly encourage you to contact your servicer and ask to see what, if any, programs or assistance they're offering, okay? Which is actually a nice um, uh, follow through to the next topic. How to manage your debt uh, and ask for payment assistance from your lenders. So the first thing you should do is look at your budget after you've made it um, and refer to it. Do you have enough money left over currently uh, to pay all of your bills? So if you were someone that was affected um, from the COVID-19 pandemic in, in the manner that your hours were cut, if you were uh, furloughed, laid off, or if you were, you're now unemployed and relying on unemployment benefits to get through, um, you want to revise your budget and see now with the limited the limited income that you're going to have or the revised amount that you're going to be receiving from your income, is that going to be enough to pay your bills? Um, if it's not, again, you want to prioritize the things that you need that are essential. So you're going to want to make sure your rent is paid, that you have enough money for food and groceries, um, that you're going to be paying your utilities. Um, all of those things, you need to make sure that you have enough money for those. Um, and then your, the rest of your bills, uh, this is how you're going to contact your lenders and ask for payment assistance. So um, you want to see how much, if any, can you afford to continue to pay on, let's say, your student loans, your credit card bills, um, your car payment. If, and if you're not going to have enough money to cover all of it or just a portion of it, you want to make sure you know how much can you actually afford to pay on your bill. Um, so let's say, for example... Uh, my car payment. Uh, we, I mentioned that in my budget, my car payment's $300 a month. Um, if I'm in a situation where my hours were cut and now I'm not going to have enough money to make my car payment, I'm going to look at my budget <clears throat> and let's say I can only afford to make a $100 payment on my car payment this month. Um, then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to contact uh, the lender that has the auto loan in this example and let them know what's going on and why you're not gonna be able to make the full car payment that month. Um, something that you should have ready to go because more than likely, more than not, likely not they're gonna ask you to have this ready is something called a hardship letter. Uh, and you're gonna, they're gonna ask that you get this from your employer. And a hardship letter, all that it is, is something that is written from your employer or from wherever you get your source of income saying that because of the COVID-19 pandemic or for whatever reason, um, your hours have been cut or that you were laid off or that you were let go and when your expected return to work date is if you have one. Um, so something very simple, it should have your name on it. Um, it should be from your employer. 
uh, or from your, your source of income. And it should state if you are going to be returning to work, um, if you're not going to be returning to work, or when your anticipated return to work date is. Okay, so you want to have that ready to go when you contact the lenders uh, because they're going to ask you, they're going to say, okay, Cecilia, you can't make your full car payment this month. When do you think you're going to be able to make it? Um, if I don't know when I'm going to go back to work, then that's when you're going to say, look, my employer says I don't have an anticipated return to work date. What can you guys do for me? Um, at that time, the lender's going to say, okay, um, you know, because of everything going on, we'll allow you to not make your payment this month. Um, call us back next month and let us know if you have a return to work date then, okay? So more than likely, you're gonna have to be getting a hardship letter from your employer or from your your source of income um, pretty much monthly if, if you don't have a return to work date because uh, what the lenders are doing is they're taking your, what you owe this month and they're just adding it onto the back end until you return to work. Uh, so you wanna have that information prepared and ready to go. Um, and then if you have enough money to pay your bills, continue to pay them. Um, even if your lenders are offering you a break this month with or without a hardship letter from your employer, if you can pay your bills and you can stay on track comfortably, um, do it. Uh, all, you're, all you would be doing by skipping your payment this month or by deferring it if you, if you don't have to, you're just adding it onto the back end. Uh, so you want to make sure that if you definitely, if you can't afford to make your payments, continue to do so. If you cannot, again, have that hardship letter ready to go um, with as much information that can be provided to the creditor or to the lender so that they're able to assist you. Um, if you have a mortgage payment, for example, uh, a lot of them are allowing you to skip just one month at a time, just like, kind of like a car note. Um, or some will say, you know, for three months, uh, you can choose not to make a mortgage payment. Just know that after those couple of months are over, more than likely you're going to have to pay it all up front. So um, if you're able to make partial payments as well, you want to communicate that to the lender. Um, again, referring back to the example with a, with a car loan, um, if I know I can only make a $100 payment of my $300, that's usually $300, then the amount that I'm going to owe next month, um, you know, it'll be less instead of owing the whole thing. Um, so I want to encourage everybody and also if you have any questions regarding uh, any of the topics that I covered today, or if you need help, uh, for example, with creating a budget, uh, if you need assistance in contacting your creditors or your lenders, uh, please reach out to She Became and ask for me, Cecilia Rosales, uh, and I would be happy to get in touch with you and see how else I can be of assistance to you. Uh, these are crazy, crazy times, and we want to make sure that everybody has the resources and the information that they need uh, to manage uh, your money wisely and be financially healthy so that when everything goes back to normal, we're in a good spot. Uh, so I want to thank you guys for taking the time to listen and look at this video. And uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you so much for your time. I hope you guys and have a great week next week. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Cecilia Rosales, and I am a branch manager for Self-Help Federal Credit Union. Uh, I also serve as a volunteer board member slash treasurer for She Became. Uh, today's video is called Your Money Matters, and you guys said I'm going to be talking to you about money and finances today. Um, in this short video, I'm going to be covering just three uh, short, simple topics. Uh, the first one is how to create a basic household budget. Uh, second, I'm going to be talking to you about the CARES Act and the impact that that has on student loans. Uh, and then last but not least, um, how to manage uh, debt, if you have any, during the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, specifically how to contact your lenders and ask for payment assistance. Um, before we get started, though, I do want to send a huge shout out and a thank you to all of our healthcare, our essential workers and volunteers who every day are leaving the comfort and the safety of their homes to provide a much needed uh, service to our community. So thank you all for that. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So. Um, we're going to start with the, the budgeting uh, topic first. So um, what is a budget? Have you guys ever made one before? Have you really kind of taken a look at where all of your money is going and how you're spending it? Um, a budget is a really, really good tool that I recommend everybody use, not just during the, you know this COVID-19 pandemic, but just year round too. Um, a, budget a budget is going to help make sure that you are always going to have money for the things that you need. Um, basic living expenses, food, rent, uh, car payment, things like that. 
Um, and for things that are important to you, um, if you're like me and you like to go out and brunch it up every month, a couple times a month, you want to make sure that you have enough money to pay for that too. Um, following a budget it also will help make sure that you stay out of debt as well as it can help um, create a plan for you so that you get out of debt faster if you're in that situation. Hi everyone. My name is Cecilia Rosales and I am a branch manager for Self-Help Federal Credit Union. Uh, I also serve as a volunteer board member slash treasurer for She Became. Uh, today's video is called Your Money Matters and you guys said I'm going to be talking to you about money and finances today. Um, in this short video, I'm going to be covering just three uh, short simple topics. Uh, the first one is how to create a basic household budget. Uh, second, I'm going to be talking to you about the CARES Act and the impact that that has on student loans. Uh, and then last but not least, um, how to manage uh, debt if you have any during the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, specifically how to contact your lenders and ask for payment assistance. Um, before we get started though, I do want to send a huge shout out and a thank you to all of our healthcare, our essential workers and volunteers who every day are leaving the comfort and the safety of their homes to provide a much needed uh, service to our community. So thank you all for that. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So um, we're gonna start with the, the budgeting uh, topic first. So um, what is a budget? Have you guys ever made one before? Have you really kind of taken a look at where all of your money is going and how you're spending it? Um, a budget is a really, really good tool that I recommend everybody use, not just during the, you know, this COVID-19 pandemic, but just year round too. Um, a, budget a budget is going to help make sure that you are always going to have money for the things that you need. Um, basic living expenses, food, rent, uh, car payment, things like that. Um, and for things that are important to you, um, if you're like me and you like to go out and brunch it up every month, a couple times a month, you want to make sure that you have enough money to pay for that too. Um, following a budget it also will help make sure that you stay out of debt as well as it can help um, create a plan for you so that you get out of debt faster if you're in that situation.